Hello again. I've been fascinated to watch over the last few years the way in which free speech on the subject of ethnicity and race has been eroded until, until even a chance remark is enough to damn people forever and see them labelled as racists. One need only look at what happened to James Watson. The idea of deplatforming speakers with whom one disagrees is not a new one, of course. I remember this happening 50 years ago with the psychologist Hans Eysenck when he was due to speak at the London School of Economics. Although he was one of the most prominent and respected psychologists in Britain, he had expressed the view that there was a connection between ethnicity and IQ, and that was enough to see him assorted when he arrived to give a speech at the LSE. This would have been 74, I think. Incidents like this, though, were seen as aberrations. Penguin Books didn't stop publishing, I think, and nor was he shunned by other scientists, even those who disagreed with his views. Things have changed a bit since the 1970s, though. These days, just a word out of line can be enough to see a professional reputation trashed and publishers boycotting one or withdrawing your books from their lists. This happened, of course, with the historian David Starkey after he challenged the idea that there, couldn't, that there had been genocide against Africans, pointing out quite rightly this couldn't really be true because there's no shortage today of black people of African origin. The idea of cancelling people, that is to say making them unpeople and refusing to publish their views or allow them to take part in academic life or be interviewed on television or quoted in newspapers and magazines, is a relatively new one. The first instance I recall of this happening was with James Watson. It will be recalled that in 1953, he and Francis Crick using X-ray photographs made by Rosalind Franklin, deduced the structure of DNA, the molecule which is at the heart of genetics, for which he and Crick were awarded a Nobel Prize in 1962. He wrote many books and in 1990 was appointed head of the Human Genome Project at the National Institute of Health in America. As perhaps the greatest geneticist in the world, you might think that people might listen when he suggested that black people could have higher libidos than white people, citing a genetic basis for this. The same thing applied when he um, talked about evidence that Jews were probably more intelligent than most other ethnicities. Neither of these ideas are really that wacky, but it was in 1970, I should say 2007 rather than 1907, in 2007 when his career came to an abrupt halt. He had arrived in England to publicise his latest book when an interview was published in a newspaper in which he said that he was gloomy about the prospects for Africa. Well, to be honest, most of us feel that way. Watson, though, went on to explain that the IQs of sub-Saharan Africans were lower, on average, than those of white Europeans. He said that we pretend that there is no difference, but the data tell a different story. And that was the end of James Watson. He had to return to America as all the places which had arranged book signings and speeches by him rushed to cancel them, lest they appeared to be racist by association. He said nothing that wasn't often discussed and expressed no dislike, let alone hatred of black people. He merely said that all the evidence suggested that their IQs were probably lower than white people. I am neither endorsing nor criticising this point of view. Merely pointing out that many people believe this, Watson said there was good reason to believe that genetics could explain what was seen. Nobody asked themselves whether it might be worth listening to the world's greatest geneticist when he spoke about genetics. Accusations of racism trumped common sense. This was 15 years ago, and I thought at the time that it was very strange that people should react in this way. 
rather than discussing what James Watson had said, which was perfectly possible, everybody just stuck their fingers in their ears and went, la 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 la, I can't hear you. Of course, since then, we've all become only too familiar with the concept of cancelling people for their views, but this was the first instance which I recall seeing. <laughs>